Welcome to Pastor Mike's Quick Shots, episode 90. I am Pastor Michael Mitchell of Maplewood and DeGraff United Methodist Churches, at least until they tell me I'm not. And today, I really just want to keep digging in. I want us to keep digging in on the things that we've been talking about and things that I've been learning, things that I've been hearing, uh, and things that I've been going through. Maybe they can help you and maybe they can. This past week, we kind of talked about staying calm, what that means, how we, we, we don't react so overtly, so uh, anxiously, uh, so intently, so that that way we won't have a problem uh, addressing things as they come. People can see this calmness in you and they understand uh, either A, something's really wrong with this person or whatever they've got going on, I want a part of it. I hope that that's where that is. All of this, all of this is designed so that you can be equipped to grow in your faith. It has been brought to my attention, and I shouldn't say brought to my attention, but it has been made in public knowledge. Uh, if you pay attention to the culture, uh, it is not the same church style culture that we have had uh, since probably the 90s. Um, I, I would imagine late 90s is probably where church every day, every Sunday culture, uh, participating in that faith-based family, it's kind of disappearing. And it's disappearing because folks are losing their ability to A, uh, estimate what truth is, and B, identify and, and be obedient to the word of God. Trust me. It's, this isn't a finger pointing exercise on my part. This is what I've seen, what I've done. And hopefully the things that I teach you are things that are, I used, tools that I used to turn my ship slowly uh, in, in a different direction so that I could be visibly transformed. One of the, one of the greatest examples I could think of um, when I talk about growth and when I talk about things that, that change in your life, um, it just sent Grady off to D.C. Uh, with his eighth grade class on a trip. Uh, and, and there's some anxiousness there. He's never really been that far away from home, uh, never been away from uh, without us when he's been that far away from home. And so it's a little bit different. It's a little bit angsty, right? You got to go, eh, OK, here you go. Go take care of yourself. I know you can. Um, and so you have to trust uh, not only chaperones and people, but then you also have to trust that God has care of him in mind. Uh, if he doesn't, he doesn't. Uh, I, I understand and completely aware of, of my son's beliefs and where he is, and I'm totally okay with whatever may or may not happen. He is great. He is going to be good. He's probably going to help his fellow classmates, um, and, and I'm looking forward to, to hearing about the adventures. But there's a part of me that goes back and remembers when I was younger, and I remember I had a, I had a 79 Malibu. I loved that car. But it was an animal. It was a big, giant metal beast. Um, we used to run over trash cans in the park. Uh, metal, you know, the old steel gallon, you know, five gallon drum. It's not five gallon drum, 50 gallon drum tank, tank, whatever. The steel drum trash cans. We used to just go and hit them, like just knock them over, just gently, not, not nothing ang angry or aggressive. Uh, but it was fun because it, it never even dented my car, never made a mark, never did anything. So I have this moment where I'm sitting there and, I, and I'm in the parking lot. A bunch of us guys have just got a bunch of toilet paper. We're going to go toilet paper somebody's house. So we get in the car and I go to back up. In my excitement, my foot slipped because I wasn't fully on the brake. My foot slips off the brake, onto the gas pedal really quick, and I hurried up and hit the brake in a parking lot. Didn't think anything about it because if we, if we made a collision with a, another vehicle, uh, it was when, as soon as I slammed on the brakes, so it couldn't have been really that bad. Uh, had a buddy of mine get out and look, is there damage? Do I need to stay? Uh, of course, don't trust your friends with your future in their hands. So he gets out, looks, says, ah, you're good. Long story short, we went through the rest of our night. A little bit later, somebody who knows my car, knows where I live, cop stops by, says, yeah, you smashed uh, into someone's car. Here's a, a fleck of their brown paint on your blue car. Um, and so it, the, 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 the story then unfolded. And I had to own up to it. I had to admit that I made a mistake. 
And it's a hard lesson to learn. But we do the same things in our Christian faith. In our Christian walk, we take our time and we slowly move from place to place. And, and we have to make mistakes. We have to grow. But the one thing that we can't stop doing is trusting God and trying to obey. Trying to be obedient to the word. And if we don't know the word, we've got to get in it. But otherwise, we've got to walk. And that means walking in Christ. And that means walking in the steps that he showed us that we can walk in. We can. We have the ability. That's whether or not we believe him or whether or not we've allowed the world to overcome us. And so therefore turning our mindset into something that looks more like the world, less like scriptural holiness. So with that in mind, <laughs> our growth process happens. And, and I love the way uh, I, I'm currently in, in a devotional from uh, C3SID or C3SYD. Uh, it stands for Christian City Church, Sydney, uh, Australia. Uh, it's a great, it's a great uh, version uh, devotional plan. If you want it, a church in motion. Um, this part that I found was really great. And I want you to hear this. Growth happens step by step. And here in a second, here in second chapter of Colossians, Paul is earnestly encapsulating for the church what these steps look like. Here we see that having received Jesus Christ as Lord, the next step is to walk in him. What does walking in him look like? And how can we apply that to our lives today? What does walking in him look like? And how can we apply it? Well, if you go to the part that they're actually referencing, it is actually, um, Colossians is completely incredible. If you want to find out if your church is what Jesus wants them to be, and you're being somebody that Jesus wants you to be, go to the book of Colossians. Read what Paul has to write to the church in Coloss. This is epically everything that we need to survive as a church and to be as a people, as Christians. Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 7. And now, just as you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. It's intriguing. But walking in Christ means that we are walking not on our own, but with the power of Christ with us. We get that power through the Holy Spirit that's here right now. This is not an easy thing to do. Discipline is not easy. Discipline is hard, but yet it reaps the benefits of a good life. To go further on into the study, they give us a little bit of that definition of what in means. You know me, I'm a sucker for definitions. So Church in Motion, C3 Sid, says it this way. In, surrounded by, in the company of, intricately connected submerged. Walking in Jesus looks like walking in his company, in his presence daily. What Paul is conveying here is the intimate relationship we begin to cultivate with Jesus once we welcome him into our lives. One of the things that I struggle with is uh, current culture. Uh, you might call them millennials, you might call them Gen Zs, um, some of the new fresher kids <laughs> to me, which means <laughs> I'm probably a Gen Xer, but um, some of the fresher things, it, it, there's not so much uh, a responsibility to church as there is that, that younger people can find their identity in a church. They can find their identity as, as, a, as a greeter, as uh, somebody who works in the tech team, as somebody who performs with a guitar, um, as somebody who leads a small group of people that are just now questioning their faith. Um, these identity points play more importantly to people who are looking to find out who they are. And who we are is a bunch of people who are all broken, who have all fallen away from God's grace, and yet God does not condemn us, but yet calls us back into this family of believers called the church 
in which we share with each other. We bear with each other's burdens. We help each other. We hold each other up. And we do this life together. And that's done not in our own strength, but by the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit, which if you, if you attend this weekend, you'll find out what Pentecost and how the Holy Spirit comes and what it means for us. But we are talking about a relationship that's constantly in flux and constantly changing. And so when we look at this, we can see that because of what Christ has done, we are not condemned, but he gives us this power, this power of life-giving spirit that is with us and that helps us. In Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2, it says this, so now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. Now there is sin, there is death, there is heaven, there is hell, um, none of which are currently here, all of which is completely uh, to become someday, which is hard for us to grasp. But yet in the midst of this, this is where the spirit guides us. This is where the Holy Spirit uh, when we are willing to hear it, uh, unveils truth. The, the, there's a different, let me cover this real quick. I know this video is going to be long, but <clears throat> there is a difference between Christianity and other religions. Other religions and other deities believe that there are tasks and things you must accomplish and things you must do in order to achieve, uh, in order to achieve enlightenment, uh, in order to achieve reincarnation, in order to achieve uh, one with the spirits of the world. Um, there are things that you have to do. Only in Christianity did those who believed in the one creator God decide that this man who said he was the Messiah, who performed miracles, it's proven that he existed. It's proven that he did the things he did. How can we simply accept that's who he is and allow the Holy Spirit to come in and transform us. It's never a forced issue. It's never a you have to. Nowhere within that doctrine. If you're living by a doctrine of you better get saved, you're living by the wrong doctrine. You're, you're missing the God of the, of the epistles, uh, I will say, because you got to read all of all of Paul's letters, and you got to read First Peter, and you got to read First John, and you got to read the Book of Revelations to understand that there is a growth process. Excuse me. <coughs> There's a growth process happening within you. It's never going to happen all at once, and it's never going to be instantaneous. But what happens is, is a transformation takes place, and we become something different every day, every day, every day. Sometimes we regress, and then we got to take those steps back forward again. All of that is done by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not by my choices. It's not by my hands. It's not by my strength. It's by the Holy Spirit. Uh, another study I got into, I love A.W. Tozer. One of my great, I love reading anything that he's written. Uh, I love the things that he's put out there. Great theologian, great human being. Um, he wrote uh, some things that somebody has put, put together, uh, Moody Publishing, I think, put these together uh, on the Holy Spirit. So it's A.W. Tozer's take on, on the Holy Spirit. And this is what he says. The idea of the spirit held by the average church member is so vague as to be nearly non-existent. When he thinks of the matter at all, he is likely trying to, um, or he likely, he is likely to try to imagine a nebulous substance like a wisp of invisible smoke, which is said to be present in churches and to hover over good people when they are dying. Does that not sound like what? Yeah, that was probably me 10, 15 years ago. I, I, I mean, I thought, even thought I was a, a church going Christian who had just backslid, right? That was probably what I was thinking. That's probably what my, tech, my thought process was. But if we're obedient, we choose to grow. We choose to stay in touch with this God. We learn and we learn and we learn. And we realize the Holy Spirit is a person. He just can't be seen like God, but he can be felt. He can be, he can lead you places. He can heal and he can give you power and you strength to make the right decisions in your life. Friends, I'm not sure where you are on your walk. I say this every week. Every one of us is different and you're going to have a different take on this than somebody else. But I hope that what you've gotten today 
is that the Holy Spirit is alive and at work, and you can make choices every day to see him, to grow with him, to allow him a place and a space in your life. Friends, if you don't have anything going on Sunday morning, we're going to celebrate Pentecost on Sunday morning. Pentecost being the day when the Holy Spirit that Jesus said he was going to send back as he ascended to heaven. He said, I'm going to send back the Holy Spirit, the advocate of my God, and he's going to help you. And he's going to give you power to do greater things than, than I did. This Holy Spirit's here. It's available to us, and it's time for us to prove it. It's time for us to get, get involved, get deep, start taking our responsibility for our own actions, and be a member of this Christianity that could still change the world. And I hope that you'll join us. We're going to prove it. That's the new series coming out for the month of June. We're going to start with Pentecost. How did those disciples get that Holy Spirit and then go do something with it. What kept them from just sitting around going, okay, great. Now this Holy Spirit's here. Now what? What changed? They had to prove it. I hope you'll join us. Maplewood at 9, DeGraff at 1030. You're always welcome. You can even right here online find us live on Facebook Sunday mornings, Monday mornings. If it's not a holiday, you'll get up on YouTube and be able to find uh, the message there. And I hope that you'll join us in one way or another. You're always welcome in any of those formats. Friends, would you join me in this closing prayer? Lord, grant that I may not resist or doubt and therefore grieve your Holy Spirit. Spirit of God, may I never terminate thought of you and instead think rightly about you and submit to your working in my life. God, give me the ability to reflect your grace in all ways. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, I hope that you have an incredible week, and I hope that I, I get to see you soon, and I hope that we're worshiping together, drawing strength from each other, and being the body of Christ together. Friends, have a great rest of your week. Be, pray, be, be thoughtful and prayerful that the Holy Spirit moves in your life. That's my last sentence. I promise. Maybe. Maybe not. That's good. Bye-bye, everybody.